Hey there, welcome to this lesson on the crisscross rule. I am going to ask you to draw the Lewis structure for magnesium chloride and then maybe take a guess at some ways that you could kind of cheat the system and get to the chemical formula way quicker. Oxidation state in chemistry is just a fancy name for charge. The way to change the oxidation state is when an atom is going to be converted into an ion when it either gains or loses electrons. So the literal charge, whether it's plus or minus, is going to tell you if that atom has lost electrons or if it has gained electrons. Remember, you're kicking negatives out of your life. So a positive charge indicates a loss of negative electrons and a negative charge indicates taking on more negative electrons. And then um, if we look at the number, the number is going to communicate the, the literal quantity of electrons that were either lost or gained. So in the case of uh, calcium plus two, that tells us that calcium gave away two electrons. And I know that it got rid of those electrons because the charge is positive. And then bromine with a negative one charge has gained one negative electron. So if you already know how many electrons are going to be exchanged, then you don't have to draw a very crazy extensive Lewis structure to get to the chemical formula. Remember, a chemical formula is something like H2O. It indicates the elements in the compound and how many that there are. So if we don't have to draw a Lewis structure and we can just do this with charges, how is that exactly going to work? It's actually pretty easy. You can just crisscross the charges to figure out how uh, what the quantity is of each element in your compound. And this works for binary compounds, meaning compounds made of two things. Remember, all ionic compounds in the solid state are called salts. They make crystal lattices that kind of look like this three-dimensional checkerboard. And if you were to take the three-dimensional checkerboard and reduce the number of, let's say, sodium and chlorine ions down to the smallest unit, you would figure out the ratio of sodiums to chlorines in the crystal lattice. And that's kind of what we're working with with the subscripts when we crisscross. If we take those subscripts and reduce them as small as they can get, then we are going to find out the ratio or the smallest unit of that crystal lattice. Let's take a look at magnesium and oxygen. From the periodic table, you should know that magnesium is always going to take on a plus two charge. And that is because magnesium is a member of group two. Magnesium has two valence electrons and is going to be looking to get rid of those two valence electrons in order to drop down to the lower principal energy level and instead have the exact electron configuration as neon. Oxygen is always going to take on a minus two charge for the same reason. If it gains two more electrons in addition to the six that it already has, it will look like neon. So in this case, we would have magnesium give two electrons over to oxygen. It would put one electron here and the other would go there. Now, in this case, we would have one magnesium giving two electrons to oxygen. So now oxygen would total eight electrons, six of its original and two that it gained from the magnesium. In this case, we would have <laughs> MgO as our chemical formula. But if we tried the crisscross rule, um, we would have Mg plus 2 and O minus 2. And this is how the crisscross rule actually works. Um, you would simply just take this 2 from over here, just the 2, only the 2, not the plus, just the 2, and drag it over here. And then this 2, the minus 2, you would take this 2, just the 2, only the 2, not the minus, just the 2, and bring it over here, and you would get... Mg2O2. And this is not the correct chemical formula because truthfully, we only needed one magnesium to bond with one oxygen because magnesium gave both electrons to the same oxygen. Um, so in this case, we would take our subscripts and reduce them to MgO. And then that is going to give us this correct answer right here.
This is true for all binary ionic compounds. Every time you have a binary ionic compound, you can use this crisscross rule and reduce any subscripts that you get to find out what their chemical formula would be if they were bonded. Let's try a few more. Let's say, for instance, I was asked to bond, um, let's see, lithium and mm, oxygen. Lithium is a member of group one, so it has one valence electron, meaning it's always going to try to get rid of that one valence electron, leaving lithium with a plus one charge all the time. Oxygen is a minus two because if it gains two electrons, it'll go from six valence electrons to eight valence electrons, and then it'll be happy. It'll look like neon. So what I can do is take this one, just the one, only the one, not the plus, just the one, and bring it over here. And I can take this two on the oxygen and take just the two, only the two, not the minus, just the two, and bring it over here. This would give me Li2O. This is exactly the chemical formula you would get if you drew the Lewis structures and started exchanging electrons. It is really that simple. Let's look at um, aluminum bonding with nitrogen because this one's very interesting. Aluminum will always take on a plus three charge and nitrogen will always take on a minus three charge. If we were to crisscross these, we would take the three from the aluminum and put it on the nitrogen. We would take the three from the nitrogen and put it on the aluminum and my chemical formula would be Al3N3. And this does not show me that um, the electrons had moved properly. It's not telling me the smallest unit of that crystal lattice. So what I'm gonna do is reduce this to ALN. For every one aluminum, I will need to bond with one nitrogen to get my chemical formula. One. Let's look at calcium bonding to fluorine. Calcium is a member of group two, so it has two valence electrons, which is going to try to give away, meaning it will take on a charge of plus two. Fluorine has seven valence electrons and only needs one more to get eight. And when she gains that one electron, she will have a charge of minus one. If I take just the two, not the plus, just the two, only the two, and bring it over here behind the fluorine, and then I take this one and do the same cross over the fluorine and take it to the calcium, I would get CAF2. Now, I always tell my students that yes, you can put the one right behind the calcium if it makes you feel better. This is what I call the training wheels. Um, some of us like to see the whole process. We like to see the one, um, and then maybe we'll go in and write it like a chemist, CAF2. You like to just have it there so that you know that you've done it properly. That is okay. Even though this technically is not how a chemist would write the formula, it is not an incorrect answer. Um, it's just that, just like in math, when you have like, you know, 2x plus 1x, you can also just write that as um, 2x plus x. The one is kind of optional. It's the same thing here. This one is kind of like this one where it's optional. It is not incorrect to write it, but it's not proper, if that makes sense. So if you need the training meals for some time, I think that's okay. Um, but try to step up and be the chemist that I know that you are and ditch that one when you feel comfortable. If you have any other questions on uh, crisscrossing, please leave them in the comment section below the video. I'd be happy to help. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I'll see you there. Bye.